It's 10 questions with Caleb Quay. If you've been watching this series, you know that, of course, he played with Elton John in the early days, right up to Mad Men Across the Water, came back for Rock of the Westies and Blue Moves, went on to play with Hall & Oates and a host of other people. Here's 10 crazy, some not-so-crazy questions with Caleb Quay. Wait, did you finish high school or were you all in school? Were you known as the music guy? I was known as the music guy, but I didn't finish, didn't finish high school. For the obvious reasons? Um, I'm not sure. Like you, you wanted to be a musician? You're like, you're, yeah, right. Absolutely. Yeah, I was done with school. Yeah. Beatles or Stones or both? Um, Beatles. Which one of the Beatles? Which you mean? It, which one's your favorite? John Paul, George, or Ringo? Oh, gosh. That's probably John. Mm -hmm. I, I had a feeling you'd say that. What's been the highest point of your career? Well, um, you know, that's a good question because th that would have to be divided into, you know, the secular part. It would have to be something like, you know, working with Elton at Dodger Stadium, those, those stadium gigs like that. Definitely unbeatable, you know. Were you in the moment enough then? And I ask all artists this question when they answer it like that. Were you in the moment then of going, this is it, man? As far as this part of my life, this is it. Oh, yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. We were on Mount Everest. You know, we were the biggest thing in the world at the time. It was as, I mean, it was, again, it was up there like in Beatles stratosphere, you know, I mean, it was, you know, I, I think in 1975, uh, yeah, 75, 76, I don't think anybody was selling out stadiums like Elton was doing. It was just massive, you know, it was the peak. No question about it. But what was the hardest part? Like where you were in, I know that, I think it was your birthday you said when Hall & Oates walked into the room. And, oh, yeah, yeah. But, yeah. but uh, what was the hardest part? I mean, I'm putting words in your mouth. What was the hardest part of your career? I think the hardest part most probably was after my stint with Hall & Oates finished, coming back home, coming off the road there, and trying to figure out what normal life was about. Mm -hmm. You know, it was like you've been up on top of the mountain and now we come down to the valley. And you uh, enjoyed working with them, eh? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it wasn't like Elton, but, uh, but it was good. It was good. Outside of music, what are you good at? <laughs> You know, cooking comes up a lot when I ask this question oh, no, to people. I'm useless at cooking. I'm useless <laughs> at cooking. That's my. That's why I married a great cook. My wife is an amazing cook. Well, you'd obviously be good at the pulpit. Yeah, well, that that I like to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was that hard? That, was that transition hard for you when you needed to do that, or were you? I mean, you told me the story about about uh, um, uh, Genesis drummer uh, Chester Thompson. Chester Thompson. Yeah, I've got that on tape. I've got. We talked about it twice, but the. The the fact that you saw the light in him, the mm -hmm. fact that you saw, um, and how often do you see do you see that in people? Uh, I mean, you're obviously in places where you would see that, but there's some and people reacted to that man when you told that That's story. Great. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's the grace of God. You know, and I, can, I think there comes a time when we're open to see things where maybe the pressures of life just uh, get a little too heavy and it serves as a kind of a wake-up call to say, okay, what I thought was working, what was supposed to work, is not working anymore. There's got to be something else. Mm -hmm. and that, was, that was the question in me. You know, there's got to be something else because I've, <laughs> I've been there, seen it and done it, you know, and it wasn't working. What's well, weird when you get everything you want, when your rockers are famous for getting everything they want, yeah. and all of a sudden they realize the biggest crash is the fact that they're not really any happier. It's, it's right. not what, it's getting what they think they wanted. Right, right. Three songs you wish you would have written. I know these are zany questions. Three songs that I wished I'd have written? Yeah. Oh, God. Where do you start? Is that what you're thinking? Yeah, right. Where do you start? Yeah, my goodness. You know, I would say, well, I can think of one, which would be your song, 
Elton's your song. Because to me, that's like a perfect song. Yeah. It's very complete. It's a perfect song. And it's the kind of song, you know, people have used it at their weddings and all kinds of, you know, things like that. You know, so it touches something at the core. Is it the beauty and the simplicity of it? There's a, yeah, like a Beatles song would be in the beginning? Kind of like that, yeah, yeah, yeah. Another one would be uh, John Lennon's, uh, now I think of it, In My Life. Mm. Yeah. So that's two. I'm trying to think of a third one. Ooh, boy. I'm always surprised that artists haven't been asked that long because to me, these are all, most of these short questions at the end are really cliche questions like, you know, yeah. you get a magazine or something. You yeah. two could be, and you can come back to it. I'll give you a third one. Sure. Again, it's a Beatles song. Andrew Bird can sing. Oh, yeah. That's a, that's a beautiful song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, top three guitars. Everyone wants me to ask you this. <laughs> Top three guitars. Well, um, I got to say, Fender Strat. Uh, um, I'm I'm into iconic sounds, so Fender Strat, uh, a Les Paul, um, Telecaster. That's the three did yeah. right there. Yeah. Uh, what's the craziest thing a fan ever did to you? Um. You know what Jeff? You know what Ian Anderson said. Mm -hmm. Ian Anderson, someone threw. He thought he was shot. I he talked to Ian like seven times. He, he, he had um, someone. He looked down and he had blood here. He felt a, a, a slight pressure, uh -huh. and it was a used con, uh, used uh, tampon. Oh, oh my! Can God. you believe it? Like, oh, like no. what? Like what? <laughs> He said, no, no. I said, well, I don't know if I'm going to use that. He said, no, use it. He says, good. He says, use that. You got to use it. Says, oh, boy. He says, because it's crazy. He says, that's the craziest thing. Oh, um, yeah. Yeah. On or off stage that anyone's ever done for me. And, and yeah. a lot of people say, well, I can't really tell you that story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, and, so there you go. Anything um, that comes to mind? No, the only thing I can think of, I was doing a concert in downtown Hollywood somewhere and some gal knew who I was, and my wife is standing over there, and she and she, she kept beckoning unto me, you know, and I'm, I'm thinking, I'm, Jim, what would you like? And she jumped up, put her arms around my neck, pulled me down and gave me a big smacking kiss, you know, and my wife's standing over there watching, you know. <laughs> well, that's a good one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and my wife says, do you know her? I said, no, I have no idea who she is. Well, I know her now. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Uh, yeah. What scares you? Uh, I, I would say for me, I, there's nothing I'm really scared of. If anything, it would be along the lines of not being able to finish my life well. Now, what I mean by that is when my time is done, I want to be able to leave something of substance for my wife and my children. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So well, that's, that's basically it. You know, when my wife and I got married, I made her a promise that I was going to take care of her. So I want to be able to fulfill that promise. Do you, uh, cause yeah. see, you've got a few years on me, but still I'm getting that thing now at 62. Cause yeah. you know, in 75, it was 15, right smack in the middle of that, you know, yeah. that Elton John yeah. thing. Yeah. But as I get older, as being an under, I've been in radio 40 years, uh, and I, I look at uh, people are going, oh, my God, your channel's are great. We just reached 100,000 subscribers. Yeah, I heard nice. about that. Yeah, yeah. It, you know, it's nice, but but it, uh, thank you. And, and but what it did, though, it reminded me that I'm actually working harder now than I've ever worked <laughs> in my life. Like, I, like I'm going... I want to leave a mark and tell me if this, if you feel any of this, I yeah. want to leave a mark. I want to do good work. I don't yeah. fight things like I used to, you know, when we were young, yeah. you fight yeah. things, you worry about yeah. stuff. Just do it. Do yeah. homework on yeah. Friday. Don't wait right. till Sunday. My wife's right. a Friday night homework person. Oh, okay. Are you watching the clock of going, I got, I got, uh, I got some good years left. I can do some good work. Yeah. I don't want to sit on the rocker and do nothing. Are you right. feeling that? Oh, sure. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, it's real. And, you know, the older we get, I find that there we have to learn to say no to some things. Yes. 
you know. It's like when we're young, when we're young, life is like this. We can, yeah, I can do some of that, 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 that. I can do this. Yeah, but well, sure, yeah, I'll be there, you know. When we get older, it goes like this. Mm -hmm. And then we have to make decisions as to, with regards to what's really important here. Being discerning, imagine that, eh? Hey, that's a concept. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed that. We'll have more from Caleb Quay in the next few days. If you want to pick up his new book, a new version of the new book, updated, there is links at the very top of the description. Remember, if you want to help the channel, the two Ps are there, Patreon. You can have early access to our videos. Or if you simply want to make a donation to Rock History Music or Rock History Book, the link is at the very top of the description for PayPal. Or simply buy a t-shirt. Remember to like our videos. It makes a big difference. And if you like what you see, subscribe to our channel, share our videos on social media, and make a comment. We always read the comments. I'm John Bowden. This is Rock History Music.